Hey guys, sorry, I haven't done a video in a while. I've just been busy and everything. Like today was my last day at work, a full time. I worked at the theme park, by the way, it's Labor Day, so now we are on weekend schedules. So more and more videos will be coming up, including a vlog, which I will get into very later. Before I get to my review of Monday Night Raw from this past Monday, I want to take a thanks to Mr. Stevie Breach for plugging my channel. Hopefully I get more subscribers, more views. I have good input, too. <laughs> I'm just sorry. I'm plugging myself, too. I have to. I changed my name to the main Mark Bordegon. Bordegon is my last name. I don't want my full name in there. The main Mark. I said to include my last name because Google. So, basically, I'm, a, I'm calling myself Mark, and I don't care. I got the old school Cena on tonight. Yes, you see right there. Excuse me. This is going to look really weird, but yeah, right there, she 54. Got this in my first ever live event on... May 28th, 2007, Saturday night's main event. It was a go-home show for one night stand back in the day. Let's just check my phone, see what's up. And I just sent a text message. iPhone's so convenient. But no, I'm here to review Monday Night Raw and Total Divas. Total Divas from September 1st, and Money Night Raw from right now, which just finished like two minutes ago. First off, Total Divas. I thought Total Divas was a very strong show last night. I liked it personally. So you got to figure Las Vegas, everything, you the parties. You, like the reality TV, it's what reality TV should be. This show is great. So everyone's like saying all this stuff like, oh, how the show sucks or how the show's not good. It's good, good television. They're doing a better job than they could have. It could, this show could honestly be a train wreck. They're doing great with it. They're flying along with it. Brie mode is fucking hilarious. I'm going to go on and saying that. Seeing Brie and Brie mode, it was a little weird. But seeing the girls, like, it's kind of a cool thing. You get to see what they're like off camera. Like, they're all friends. Like, I don't know what it's like. Like, if you do that with the guys, no one would absolutely watch it. Sorry, I was texting a friend about from work about stuff. It's personal. But, uh, like, think about this. If you do it, like, you could follow, like, Cena, Seamus, Pong, like, don't read all those guys around. No one's going to watch it. You follow the women around. It's great. And even now, I'll get into what happened on Raw tonight with the women in a minute, which I really liked. Uh, but apart from that, Divas, Divas show is solid. I like how now, it's, even though it's mid-season finales coming up, which I'm kind of sad about because the show's going away, but hell, football's coming back. So with something bad happening, something good's happening. But I like how in this week's episode, you're going to see more of Eva Marie and JoJo. Like, usually it's just like, eh, whatever. But I like how they're incorporating them into their own segments in the show. It's not like before, oh, we're going to have a house party party. Oh, it's she's shooting for Maxim. She's going to be singing with the Funky Dattles. I remember that raw very vividly, actually. I don't remember what episode it was, but I remember it was in June or July. But I do remember it. How you have these girls, the girls who aren't going to be on the main card for a while. Like, they're, no, they're, they're on the card. They're in Raw, but they're not going to be wrestling in for a while. So that angle is very good. And uh, TheBomb.com. I tweeted it. Stevie Breach favorited it and retweeted it. So thanks, Stevie, once again. YWC. Um, on to Raw, from which just ended. I was, like, the power thing, it's starting to get a little out of hand. I'm sorry, like, tonight's Raw was, with John being gone, you know it's going to be a few hard months. They're going to have to think really hard of what to do, because usually when you have a guy like John, you can incorporate him anywhere. You can do this or that, this or that. If John were around, the corporate stories would be a little bit different. I don't think it would be so much power demanding. With that being said, though, my highlight of the night would has to go to the Cody Rhodes versus Randy Orton match. It was a very solid match. I marked out in my basement. I marked out for something else, which I will get to in a few minutes. Um, yeah, no, I'm if I wasn't if I was there tonight in Des Moines, I wouldn't have got my money's worth. But then again, live WWE, you think it's good no matter what it is. You can watch on television, like, oh, that was absolute crap. 
but just because you're there in the building, I mean, it's like it's the greatest show, not the greatest show ever, but because you're in the building watching it, it just adds that much more greatness to it. So like, it could be the worst thing ever, still good, but you're always gonna find your flaws in there. Like, my flaw tonight was the ending of the show. Like, honestly, you have it three weeks in a row. You had the coronation, you had the gauntlet match, coronation the 19th and now. Gauntlet last week at Phoenix. Tonight in Des Moines, you had the Brian Big Show match. Superstars on the stage is getting very, 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 very out of hand, and it is getting out of hand quickly. Sorry, another text, but uh, it's getting out of hand. Like, the whole, like, oh, you gotta go knock him out or you're getting fired. What happened to his ironclad contract, the Big Show? Last year, I have an ironclad contract. I'm going to go in there. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. What happened to that? That's the one thing I don't like about when they do with storylines like this. You have a good storyline going for you, and then out of nowhere, it's like <laughs> vanished into thin air. Someone want to explain to me that? Like, does someone really want to explain to me what happens to that? But as well, like, Ryan's being picked on, and you know, you already know something screwy is going to happen next Sunday in Detroit. Like, it's not even like you need to find it out or think, oh, well, can it happen? Will it happen? No, it's going to happen. Brian's going to, Orton's going to win by DQ. Brian will win the match by DQ. Orton's going to retain. They're going to take it down to Battleground and Hell in a Cell, and then we figure it out there. Because you do know, I already know from insider reports, they want CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan in New Orleans. You heard it first. That's the match they want to have in New Orleans to see him Punk versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship. My collector's cup right here. They want that man. Mm -hmm. No. That guy. The guy with the tattoos and the beard. Against Yes Man. Whoops, Dolph. The Yes Man, Daniel Bryan. Oh, look at Deep. But that's what they want. We got two wrestlers on the biggest stage of them all. I don't see why not. And then <sighs> Cody Rhodes, though I did read it though online from spoiler points and stuff. He is taking time off because he is actually getting married to uh, Eden Styles, who was the ring announcer in 2011. If anyone remembers her, uh, no, I don't think so. He's just taking time off to get married and stuff like that. I'd probably just hang with her for a bit, and then he's gonna head come back and then there. But this, you know what? I finally figured it out tonight. What this is like. Do you remember 2011 when Hunter had that power, but then all that shit was going on backstage? Basically, they had that whole boycott against him. Same thing's gonna happen, except it's heel Hunter, and he can he calls the shots. So basically, it's not like, oh, you boycotting, you're boycotting, you do anything bad, you're getting fired, or you're gonna get fucked and put in a w really weird match. No, that's what's gonna happen this time. It's not like last time everyone's gonna walk out, they're gonna have like a State of the Union address. None of that's gonna happen because if it happens, they're gonna fire, they're gonna get fired. Um. They gotta stop with Los Matadors. Like, honestly, like, why don't you stick to Primo and Epico? Who are they gonna rival? Like, the best I can see is the real Americans and it being very, very racist. That's the only thing I have to say. I like the real Americans. I also like the new Damien Sandow, which I'll get to do in a minute. But Los Matadors, real Americans, is what I can see happening. I'm not gonna contend for the tag titles. Tag titles, top, the top three tags in the WWE right now, apart from the Shield because they're champions, kinda like, you should rank them like they do in UFC. One, I'm going to put primetime players. Two, Usos. Three, Real Americans. Primetime players, though, are getting good airtime now. Like, before, it wasn't there. I think it might, even though it's a little bad to say, I think it might do part in coming out of the closet. But at the same time, it's still a good thing. They're still getting good time. They're a good team, having good matches. Yeah. Like, overall tonight, everything. And then the CM Punk segment was really well done, really good. The Divas match was what you said it was. The three girls going in there beating the crap out of AJ. So you know what I could see happening at Night of Champions, that Fatal 4 match? The four girls, the, the three girls beat the crap out of AJ, kick her out of the ring. The three girls are going to fight each other. Just beat the living hell out of each other. AJ's going to come and sneak a pin and go away with it. That's what's going to happen. Like This stuff is so easy to predict now. Writers, you gotta get around me. I'm not stupid. No, okay. On to next week's Raw. Next week's Raw. Where is Raw next week? I'm gonna let like, Des Moines. Oh, right. Toronto, Ontario. Air Canada Center. We're left. Toronto, Ontario. 
I will be at Raw next Monday night. That's the thing. So next Monday, no review will come right away. Review will be on Tuesday because next Monday at this time, I will be in the Air Canada Center in an expected sellout of a crowd. Like I was like, hey, Ticketmaster, there's like barely any seats left. It's just 300 hard camera side. For those of you who want to know where I'm sitting, I do have seats that aren't camera visible, but if you see me, you see me. I'll be wearing this. I may be wearing a hat. I'm not hard to miss. But you know what I think with a crappy Raw this week? Plans for a great Raw next week. Because last time when I went to a show was in Buffalo. The week before, we had like one of the probably the greatest matches this year. Cena Punk and the da- that match at Dallas on the 25th of February. That's going to be a match of the year contender. But first Raw in Toronto in three years? Pumped. But the news that got me marking out tonight is that Edge is coming back. Edge is my one of my favorite of all times. I just did my shop order, which an unboxing video will be coming soon. I was going to wear one of the shirts I was getting in that unboxing order, but I see that Edge is coming back. I got his Hall of Fame shirt. I don't know. I think he's going to be involved. I think, remember what he did at Over the Limit? He's going to have something to do with there. And I'd rather see the cutting edge any day of the week than Miz TV. I was like saying, if I see Miz TV, I'm going to scream at the top of my lungs at the Air Canada Center next Monday night. But no, next Monday you're going to see a day in the life video because I got school and I'm taking the go train down with my good friend. Meeting up with my good friend, Y2 Indian, who was supposed to be here tonight, but he had other plans, so him and I couldn't do it. We're supposed to review Total Divas when my friends wanted to go out. They called us stags watching Total Divas, but then we said, hey, it's women. Hot women, too. So, yeah, Y2 Indian, Red Devils goalie, and the main Mark Bordegon are taking over the Air Canada Center next Monday night. Like, it's raw. I went to one in March, but hometown shows are the best to go to because it's like, it's your hometown, it's your people, and you know, every time they come to Toronto, it's a solid, solid crowd. Mm-hmm. Well, sorry, text message, but yeah, next week's Raw, I'm expecting it to be phenomenally good. Like, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to... Well, let's see. Next Monday, I'm expecting to see some basic angles, stuff like that. I'm expecting to see Punk, Heyman, Axel. If I hear we're here, I'm going to mark. Like, uh, Uh, sorry for all the interruptions, this is probably my longest review video, but look for me next week, like, I'm pumped, it's like, there's so much of this good stuff happening, that's just, like, great, like, I start school, raw, like, I'm going to raw, it will be my first time, however, seeing the... It will be my first time seeing the new HD set, as the last show I went to was the old school set, which was freaking cool. I gotta stop this video now. I did Total Divas. I did Monday Night Raw. I'm signing off. That's why I want to talk about my vlog before I go, because there will be a day in the life vlog where you'll see me before school. Before school. When I'm with Red Devils goalie, because we have to do some car swaps, because him and I are going down together. We're meeting Y2 Indian downtown. My, I have second class, but there will be no class footage. Go train footage. We got a huge surprise planned for Union Station. We're going to make the Marks come out. Like, it's like, Marks, come alive! <laughs> show, some show footage, because I don't want to record. I don't want to get in shit. And I like going to events, too, so I don't want to ever get kicked out of one. And then my review, probably Monday night or Tuesday morning. All right, well, see you, YouTube.